In this video we are going to clarify everything about materials and material creation in Blender. So this video is going to be a bit long, I think, uh, but I promise you will uh, learn a lot of things, especially if you are a beginner. First of all, if you want to understand what materials uh, are in Blender, uh, you look at uh, the real world first. Don't jump into Blender and try to create something. First of all, let's look at the real world, uh, everything around us, what kind of objects we have around us. Because whatever you make in Blender is a kind of something which you take from real world, right? You are not going to make something that no one has ever seen, right? So materials can be two types, surface and volumetric in Blender, but in reality, uh, we only look at the surface. In real life, by material, we mean what any object is usually, is basically made of, right? For example, if you are using a computer, your computer is made of different parts and those parts are made of different materials, right? For example, the screen is, can be glass or uh, the frame can be metal or plastic, right? Or the table that you're sitting on, or you're not sitting on the table, I think. You're just, uh, ha you, you have put everything on the table and the table is made of wood, right? So you have glass, you have different materials and you only see them, see the surface, you don't necessarily see the inside of the material, you don't have to. But in, in CG, in computer graphics, there are volumetric materials too. Uh, I will talk a bit more about this a bit later. So for example, let's imagine uh, you have uh, clouds, right, in the sky. How do you make them in Blender? You don't model them, right? You don't, they are not 3D models, they are kind of materials. So in Blender or in other CG software, you create clouds using materials, mostly. Simulations and simulations are visible to our eyes uh, through materials. So yeah, these, uh, this is a bit more advanced topic, but in this video, we mostly uh, covered the surface materials. So let's go. Materials which you can make with textures, image files, right? You can see wood around you, right? You can see metal objects around you. You can find some ceramics or some, I don't know, maybe, or whatever, right? You can find some uh, rubber or you can see some plastic objects right around you. You will see paper, right? You can see paper around you and glass, of course. Uh, you will see glass, for example, the window of the, the glass of the window, for example, or your cup, as I said earlier. We might see rocks, stones, right? We can see ground. We might see fabric, for example, your clothes and whatever you have, uh, some fabric, right? Clothes and other stuff and leather, so, and more and more. But these that I have shown you that you can see on the screen are uh, the most basic materials that we see everywhere. If you have any other materials, if you think of any other materials, or if you can see any other materials around you, you can add to this list, right? But basically they are made uh, in, in Blender, in CG computer graphics, they are made in similar ways. So. There is no big difference between stone or rock and, and ground, right? There is no big difference between stone and the tree barks. For us, in real life, they are completely different, right? Or the stone and the flower might be different, right? The material of the flower, because it's natural. But for CG, the advantage of computer graphics is they are basically made in, the sim in a similar, similar way, uh, because hopefully you don't touch uh, and the materials in computer screen, right? So this is an advantage. The computer doesn't have to worry about the uh, actual material, right? It, it's just the visualization. So it's a good thing. So let's move on to some special materials. Uh, what about these emissive materials? For example, your phone screen, your computer screen. It emits light, right? It can turn on and turn off and it can't light if you turn off your all the lights in your room and if you keep your laptop on it will uh, give off light right it can light the room so in computer graphics in blender this is a special type of material we might have some materials like for example wax wax right uh, for example candle uh, even your hands 
you can see there is some light coming through your skin. It's a special feature of, of the human skin material, right? So we have this fabric uh, and it has kind of, you, you see it's a, it has special velvet effect on it. Or what about this uh, kind of glossy carbon fiber material? And this is an example of layered materials. Another special material and the last one I, I want to show you is this, which is stylized kind of cartoony materials. We can also make these types of materials in Blender or in other CG software. So yeah, these are basically all of the materials that uh, that you make or you use or you create most of the time in Blender. And a little about volumetric materials. Let's look at them. I have a few examples. For example, clouds. These are also materials in Blender. Uh, not necessarily a material in real life, but in Blender it's a kind of it, it is made with materials. Also the fog, it can be made with materials or these are basically the same things, right? Fog and cloud. Uh, and fire, of course, it's also made with materials. Of course there is a simulation part, but you know to see it we need to have volumetric materials for this too. So and there are some more, more examples, but these are not our focus in this lesson because most of the time you will make surface materials not volumetric materials so now we have overall idea about materials in real life and uh, about material concept in in blender right so let's jump right into blender and try to make one of these materials now i'm in blender if you're a complete beginner uh, i will uh, just in case i will uh, tell you uh, some prerequisites before you can start this experiment so let's come here please come here in properties uh, editor and uh, change the render engine from whatever it is to cycles because we need to see realistic materials and after that go to shading and if your shading is a bit different don't worry uh, you just need to find this window which is this material preview window and let's uh, press Z hovering over this window and go to render it. Now we have a uh, render it option, uh, render it view and let's create an environment first. For that just come here and click on this color and environment texture but it is not necessary you can uh, also come here uh, by middle mouse button I am just dragging this menu uh, open this and you can turn on scene world and you will see this why am I doing this because it's a better way of seeing the material effects now you should have automatically you should have the, these two kind of boxy uh, things these are called nodes and these are kind of functions which we might use uh, to create materials. We will use to, to create materials, right? If you don't see them, you probably don't have any materials. And to create materials, you come here to material properties. And if you don't have anything like this empty space here, you can create a new material by pressing on this new while you have selected the desired object. Let's click new and rename the material to test and now we can test everything here uh, but now you have a problem if you're a complete beginner now you have a lot of things to understand here right so this is only one node this is only one function let's say but in blender you have a lot of things if you have used blender before how do you add stuff in blender by pressing shift and a you add more and more nodes look how many nodes you have here so a lot of notes right but you know what there is a very good news you can create almost any surface material with this one node so it's a really good news right you don't have to dig and find any other notes but actually if you want to make better materials you might need to use a few more not all of them certainly so don't worry about that if you are overwhelmed so first of all let's look at this principle bsdf it's a type of 
shader node, I deleted it, shift A, shader category and principal BSDF. So this is connected to the surface. I'm connecting it by just dragging and dropping uh, to the pins, from pins to the pins. So it's connecting. So this is the main function that help you to create any material. So, but there is a problem, as I said, there are a lot of things to cover here. So you try to change the color. Okay, let's change it. Oh, now it's a bit orangey, right? Let's turn on metallic. Uh, it's metal, right? Roughness. What? What, what, is, what does this mean, IOR? What is alpha? What is subsurface? Specular, a lot of things, right? So you get confused if you're a complete beginner. So I'm going to help you with all of this. I mean, all of these things. I will explain on the slides visually. So let's go to the slides again and I will show you what each of these mean and what they help us to make. So let's go. So first of all, let's look back at uh, what we had. So we had surface and volumetric, right? Well, we had surface materials and volumetric materials, as you can see here. So in Blender, as you saw, we create surface materials with this principal BSDF node, which is a huge node. And I just uh, showed you what kind of things you have. And it's a kind of problem if you're a beginner to understand all of these, but I'll, I'm going to show you just that. And there is another node I showed you in shader category. You have principled volume. You can search for this and you basically use this one node to create any volumetric uh, material. But uh, we will talk about this probably in, an, in a separate video. In this video, we will uh, focus on this principled BSDF node. So let's go now. Uh, let's look at the surface uh, principal BSDF node, uh, which creates any surface material, as I said. Now, what is this first thing? First thing is base color, and it is what it is. Uh, you get the idea, right? You understand what it is. It's just a color. But this pin, this yellow pin, means we can connect images, image files. Yes, you heard it right. You can take a photo with your phone camera and uh, send it to your computer and connect to this principal BSDF just to see that photo on your 3D model. So it's as simple as that. You can connect uh, image files to this. So the next thing, as you probably guessed, it, uh, it decides if the material is metallic, metal or not metal. So one is fully metal, zero is fully non-metal. So the next thing is roughness. It can be a bit strange, a bit difficult to grasp, but look what is what roughness is. So zero roughness, full roughness, zero roughness, full roughness. So roughness simply means how glossy, how shiny the surface of the material is, of the model is. Completely glossy and full roughness, zero glossy, there is very uh, little reflection on full roughness. One zero. By default it's 0.5 which is uh, something in between. So next what is this IOR? I, uh, I, I -R, let's say. So what does this number mean? It's index of refraction. So it's just an index. It's just a kind of indicator or just a number which decides uh, how much refraction we have. So what is refraction? What uh, Refraction is simply the bending of light so you can see a really popular example of refraction. If you, if you write on Google what is refraction, you will see a lot of examples just like this. Uh, this number simply decides how much uh, bending we have. If it is one, there is no bending. You don't see any refraction like this. We have uh, so 1.45 is kind of Gl uh, refraction of glass, uh, 0.3 or something is refraction of water and, uh, and etc. And yeah, it's a bit advanced topic. If you want to know more about that, you can just Google and do some research. But basically, we never touch this number. So the next thing is alpha. It's simply transparency. Transparency, uh, the, there is a difference between transparency and transmission or this refraction stuff. Transparency is opacity in other software. 
Yeah, in many other programs it's called opacity and it's the same thing in Blender. It's just transparency. There is no light breaking or bending. Uh, transparency means, alpha means, so you simply allow uh, to see what is behind the material. So the next thing, which is a really important thing, uh, normal, so it's a special uh, feature which can help us fake some depth, some details, which helps us fake details, as you can see here. This is without normal, this is with normal. Normal is a kind of magic feature which allows uh, 3D artists to fake these details without uh, manually modeling these. You know, look how different it is. This is without uh, normal map, this is with normal map. So let's go to the next slide and look at the other options we have here. So the next thing is subsurface. Subsurface is what allows us to fake this detail, this kind of light coming through the edges or the... So the next thing is specular. Specular is simply uh, the reflection, specular highlights or reflections on the, on the glossy surface without metallic. If you turn down metallic and if you turn down, if you uh, kind of bring this roughness down to zero and metallic zero, you will see some reflections on it. If you have specular number, these are all just numbers from one to from zero to one. If you have spe specular uh, higher than one, you will see some reflections. If you have specular specular zero, you won't see any reflections. So it's kind of a, something that we don't touch almost never. So just like this, we don't touch this specular value a lot. So now uh, the next thing is transmission. So transmission, what is transmission? Transmission is simply glass, glass effect. If you turn up transmission and bring down roughness, you will have this effect. Glass with a little bit of shadow. So it's a really good way, a very easy way to create glass. Of course, there are more advanced ways to get rid of this shadow and have more control over this kind of uh, glass effect. But basically, transmission, if you turn up transmission to one, you will have glass. And then we have coat. This will allow us to create uh, these types of layered materials. Actually, there is only one layer, not uh, a lot of layers. So because it's, uh, yeah, it's just, one layer on top of your material. And then we have this sheen option, allows us to create this velvet effect. And the last thing is emission, which will help us to create emissive materials, which are the materials which give off light. Uh, there is a difference between emissive materials and uh, or real light objects. In Blender, we have light objects, which is the only purpose of light objects is to give off light. But the emission is kind of uh, makes the material emit light. So it's a different concept. So yeah, here we go. You have all the details of all of these, uh, I mean, properties and sliders. Now we're back in Blender. Uh, please take a screenshot of those, the things that I just showed you, the slides. So now uh, you can, uh, we can check those. Let's create a UV sphere and make it smooth. Right click and smooth. Don't worry, the, I deleted the cube but the material doesn't get deleted uh, at least uh, for some time. So you can find the material that we created uh, for the cube by coming here to material preview and uh, this and find test. So this will show you all the materials in this blend file. Now let's test these things. So color, as I said, metallic, full metal, as I said, right? Let's change this uh, HDR environment and have this, this environment. Let's see, we have this artifact, you know, to fix it, we need more depth. It is not necessary, but let me, add uh, the modifier, add modifier, generate and subdivision surface uh, just to get rid of this ugliness. So yeah, I think it's a bit better now. 
Let's delete this light too. We don't need this light. So yeah, it's a bit better now. Now uh, let's play around with these. So you can see metal, non-metal, and something in between will have uh, zero metallic, metallic. So let's bring down the roughness. As you can see, fully metal, zero roughness. If zero metallic, we have some specular reflections, as you can see. And we can control the specular reflections, as I said, from here. More reflections, no reflection. More reflections, no reflection. So you understand what's specular. And specular is something we never touch. And we have index of refraction. As I said, it, uh, it will change the behavior of glass object. Let's make glass, actually. Let's change the color back to white and open transmission. If you remember transmission, as I said, it was glass and increase the transmission and create glass. As you can see here, glass ball. I have zero roughness, so it's looking good. If I have more roughness, it's kind of frosted glass, right? So, uh, and this index of refraction, as I said, uh, affects this glass effect. Let's bring it down bring it up and you can see uh, this is something which changes this glass uh, refraction behavior so index of refraction transmission to make glass so and specular to uh, remove the highlight uh, remove the reflections as you can see or bring the reflections back as you can see especially at the back of this you can see the effect so 0.5 is the realistic so and the next uh, one thing from here it is subsurface let me show subsurface in action let me delete this thing and bring in monkey and while monkey is selected press ctrl 2 to give some more resolution by automatically adding subdivision surface modifier right click smooth and now let's add bring that material any material actually and let's say subdivision uh, not subdivision sub surface scattering SSS in many situations it's called SSS in some programs maybe and let's open sub uh, surface and increase the weight uh, change the color to kind of and increase the weight you have scale to control more subsurface like here IOR value for this too, so you have this interesting subsurface effect going on right there, as you can see. So this is subsurface, we talked about tra specular, transmission, to make it glass, clear coat. Let's bring up roughness and let's change the color. Let me uh, add texture. Shift A texture and checker texture. Let's connect this to this and change these two colors red and blue. Uh, maybe not blue, maybe yellow. It looks better. And now let's uh, change this clear coat to weight. As you can see, now we have additional uh, layer on top of our original material if you look carefully. If you look at you can also tell that it's different by changing this color value, tint value. You have a tint on top of your original uh, color here. So this is coat. Let's remove coat. And sheen. Sheen for uh, fabric, as, as we saw. Let's create fabric. It's easy. Shift A. Do what I do. Or if you don't want, you, you don't have to. Shift A. Mesh. Plane. Let's go into edit mode by pressing tab on our keyboard S and move the cursor to make it a bit bigger. Press tab again to go out of edit mode. Press G and Z and move your cursor up. And again, go into edit mode by pressing tab, right click, subdivide, and subdivide a bunch of times, like so. Press tab again to go out of edit mode and come here. Uh, to physics properties and turn on cloth on this object and press this come to physics turn on collision now let's uh, play 
uh, press spacebar to play and now we have this interesting cloth animation or simulation that's very easy right or uh, you can go uh, you can hold down shift and left arrow key to go to the beginning of the animation and undo this clause simulation uh, select this clause object and come to physics properties uh, and you can turn on collisions uh, open collisions and turn on self collision this way you will have better collisions the clause will not intersect with itself so now let's uh, play again by pressing spacebar now we have a bit better simulation here now right click shade smooth go to modifiers add subdivision surface modifier to make it a bit look a bit better let's give another material like velvet material so as I said sheen will help you create velvet effect especially you will see it here let's uh, create something like this and sheen and increase the weight as you can see it's much different now as you can see it's much different it, it has some specular highlights here and there this is zero this is full and it's lo it looks more like material here it looks more like fabric here as you can see and the final thing is this emission so to create emission uh, we can give emission to this let's bring it remove it and increase the emission number just like that now it's emitting light we can check it by uh, turning down the world strength down to zero and now you can see it's uh, lighting the environment so this is everything but uh, there is another problem and we're going to fix that too there is another problem what is the problem the problem is uh, our materials do not look so great right these are very simple materials so these are not great these are not realistic so let's bring in a plane rx90 uh, you don't have to do this if you can't let's uh, go to edit mode not edit mode let's give it generate and solidify you can use uh, a simple cube you don't have to create this wall and let's try to make a brick so how do we make let's give a new material brick wall now how do we make a brick wall or a stone wall how do we create the material right this is a wall it's fine but how do we create a material definitely we're going to need some uh, uh, image files right so you don't want to draw bricks on this wall right so there is a good way of creating materials with image textures so now we are talking about uh, texture maps what are texture maps texture maps are special image files which are taken by taken by uh, human beings with a photograph the purpose of image textures is to create some materials inside uh, programs like blender or other 3d software all the games that you play on computer uh, all of them use image textures so to kind of fake details to create great materials so they use image textures. so let's uh, find some image textures how do we find of course you can take your smartphone your iPhone or whatever you have and you can take a photo of for example brick wall in real life transfer that image to your computer and bring it into a blender and connect it but it doesn't look great because there are a lot of things to take into consideration before you can plug in any photo to your material uh, first of all the, uh, you don't have to do that because there are websites where you can download specifically made image textures to create so those materials so one of the websites I could recommend is called polyhaven.com so let's go there and download some image, image textures now I'm in uh, polyhaven.com as you can see we have HDRI images uh, which we don't talk about now and we have textures let's browse textures let's come to brick and choose any brick that you want let's choose this brick 
going to it's free but uh, uh, you, you can support uh, because it's a really really fantastic website you, you also have a blender add-on so you can see a few options here we have 4k we don't have to download in 4k because uh, it's just for demonstration and if you click on this you will see some interesting things here you can download them as blend file or zip let's choose zip and uh, download these actually you can exclude blend file or gltf file and you will only download these you can turn on what kind of format you have what kind of uh, texture you have you don't i don't have i don't need ambient occlusion i don't need this and i don't need displacement i don't need i need normal i need direct x and gl uh, blender use OpenGL, so we don't need direct x and roughness so only three textures and 14 megabytes so let's download them after you have downloaded uh, you need to unzip you i think you probably know how to unzip files i think it's not very difficult now we have one uh, image file in i think jpeg format and two in openxr format so uh, because these need more detail this is why these are in richer format so let's bring these inside blender so it's very easy you can just drag and drop let's drop in the color and let's drop in this normal and let's drop in this roughness so now let's connect plug these in and see how they work color to base color and immediately you see these brick uh, texture this brick texture it's it's great right so but it doesn't look very realistic right it doesn't look very realistic it's very flat and kind of boring right it uh, even your if you have a son even your young son doesn't believe that it's a real wall right I have a very young son this is why I'm talking about sons so the, this is this is roughness rough you can see this name I think roughness so let's plug into roughness 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 to roughness and it is a bit better right so and then we have this normal but unfortunately you don't directly uh, plug this normal to normal so if you remember you can see normal will help us create this uh, uh, interesting effects details uh, or depth fake depth with just an image file look this is without normal this is with normal and it will do the same in our case uh, just now so let's plug in normal but unfortunately as i said we are not going to plug it directly like this we need another node shift a vector and normal map we will uh, color to color normal to normal and now suddenly you see interesting effects does it look more realistic now you can call your son and show this uh, hey does it look realistic now and it looks realistic now he can believe that it's very realistic and you know what it will react to light that's very uh, great so let's bring in a light shift a light point and let's g to move this and look at look how the shadows are uh, kind of reacting to this light it's it looks insanely realistic right with only an image file we haven't modeled anything it's just a plane with a solidify modifier uh, this is uh, how powerful these te textures can be so everything that you see in games all those uh, walls or other things these are made uh, possible with these textures so so as we have seen we have created uh, a lot of uh, we have learned a lot of things i think hopefully and we created a wall material but uh, even still uh, we kind of you you kind of feel that you don't have enough control you don't have enough control over uh, what kind of materials you can create right even even all of with all of these techniques you, you think that you are still a bit limited right uh, in terms of what kind of materials you can create uh, and the materials that we are we have uh, learned about and we have created do not le do not look uh, very great right so what's the secret to create great materials 
So the secret to create great materials is using all of these techniques in combination by combining different uh, features of a material. So in order to create great materials, you need variety. You need combination of all of these features. You need blending and mixing different uh, features of a material. So this is how you create amazing materials. As you can see here, we have an example of Blender's uh, great open movie. For example, look at this uh, metal object. Uh, so there are some imperfections. There's some imperfections here, and there is a combination of different uh, materials here: shiny metal, black metal, some uh, glass, and some uh, emission, some little screen with some information on it, and some dirt in some areas. As you can see, some metal, some edges are uh, kind of worn out and everything. As you can see, his cap is not a uh, perfect right hat and everything. As you can see, this is made of, uh, I think, car tire and dirt built up. So a lot of imperfections and a lot of detail. So this is how you uh, usually make materials. And if you want to support this channel, please consider uh, trying my full Blender course on Udemy or on Blender Market. The links will be in the description. So please check that out. If you buy the course and learn, you will support this channel. If you buy the course on Blender Market, you will support Blender too. And you will learn a lot of things because everything I just described here will be in the course and you will have a lot of knowledge there. So yeah. So as I said, the best materials are created by mixing, blending different features, right? So let's quickly uh, get over that. Let's quickly uh, try to understand it, right? Let's give it a material, a very simple material, a color uh, or a darker color. So yeah, this is very bland and this is very boring, right? And just one color. That's why it's not very interesting but we can uh, improve it uh, by mixing or blending different materials. So it, what, how do we mix two things, two colors or two textures? Well, there is a mix shader or mix color. So first let's use mix shader. I think this is enough uh, to be able to understand everything. You learned how to, you, you, you have learned what kind of uh, node we use but we haven't learned how to use it. For that, you need to understand a really, really important uh, concept, which is the, which is this. So all of these numbers, if you look, there are a lot of numbers, a lot of sliders, right, and numbers here. All of these can be driven uh, by color. And what, co what kind of color? Uh, well, uh, black and white. So black and white is really important so we can drive all these sliders, all these numbers with black and white. Black being zero, white being uh, one. So let me demonstrate this. So here I have two image files, which is just white and black. So let me bring those into Blender and see what they do. Now let me delete this. Uh, you can uh, press Control and X to delete this and keep the keep the connection connect this color to white and as you can see it's white if you plug white it will give the value of one so let's check it now it's fully metal because I'm plugging in white as it, uh, this is the same as turning it up uh, all the way to one as you can see here let's plug one here and black is zero so let's make roughness zero as you can see, I'm driving the values with colors. But just black and just white is not very useful because you can simply do this, right? And uh, why are they really important then? Well, because uh, we can have one image with black and white information. Now, as you can see, I have uh, some more textures with black and white information at the same time. So now, uh, Let's look at this. This is yeah, something like this, not very important. Uh, let's plug this to color 
and see what it looks like. As you can see, we have uh, made the monkey a bit more beautiful than before, right? So the, this part is white and whatever, if I plug this image to any, any sockets, these parts will get full one value and the dark part parts will be zero. So if I plug this into metallic, the white parts will be full metal and the uh, black parts will be zero metallic. So let's plug this in. And as you can see, these white parts are full metal. So what I want to do is uh, in Blender now, you will you have the ability to kind of invert this. Just search for invert, shift A and write invert, invert color. And you can plug this to color and this color to metallic. Now all the black parts are metal, uh, the white part is not metal. I'd like to make uh, the white part metal and white part fully uh, zero roughness. So I will plug this and do this. And as you can see, white part is zero metal, uh, full metallic and zero roughness. So now you can see the effect, right? Now you can see the power of different uh, colors, black and white, and mixing. And you can do the same here. For example, let me uh, mix two colors. Let's mix, uh, let's have mix, uh, mix color. Let's bring in two colors, blue and red, and use this black and white texture as a factor. I'm using this black and white texture as a separator, not just color information, as you can see, right? And we can still uh, kind of plug this into metallic and shift A, invert color. Oh, sorry, should plug this in here and this here, just like that, as you can see. Now it's more interesting, right? We can control color, metallic, roughness, and everything. So it's a bit too complicated for you if you're a beginner. But I, what I wanted to show you is simply uh, we drive different properties, different numbers with black and white color. And this will give us a lot of control over what kind of uh, material we need. And I will show you one more, one last thing. So now imagine you want to decide is, uh, where should be white and where should be black. Of course, uh, there are a few ways. Blender will allow you to do this in a few ways. You can basically paint whatever you want to white and black. It's It gives you, I think, all the control that you need. So you don't need any more control than that. If you can paint, you can paint all these uh, details by yourself or uh, there are some procedural ways some uh, automatic ways so let's bring in ambient occlusion color uh, I'm in occlusion information and let's see what it does as you can see this is what it does and you don't have to do this I'm just showing you that these are also possible you can decide what is white, what is black, just like that. And now you can use this information uh, to control the colors. Mix RGB, we need uh, color, mix color, uh, not color, but now you can see I can control color with this automatic uh, ambient occlusion. Uh, so yeah, this is just an example of with uh, mixing colors and adding blending colors, right? And using different notes, we have a lot of notes which can help us create amazing materials. So yeah, this this was everything I want to show you. Of course, there are uh, many many notes which will allow you to create any complex material in Blender. So again, if you want to learn those, please uh, consider checking out my full Blender course on Udemy and on Blender Market. And this, uh, if you buy the, that course and learn Blender, uh, this way you can also support this channel. Yeah, thank you. Uh, see you in the next lessons.